<laughs> I know. I absolutely know that people are going to be looking forward to what's going on here. And what we were going to say here today. Welcome aboard. We appreciate everybody coming aboard here. Thank you again on this Monday. On this Football Monday here on the National Football Show. By the way, please do me a favor. Hit all the likes. We love it. Um, Let me make it very clear here. Right out of the gate. By the way, let's start the show. We got to say this as well. Four hours powered by our friends at BetUS. And please hit the like button. First 15 minutes is one of the most important times here for the program. Super Chats all go to the top. You know, sports gives us a great opportunity to get away from the election, which is tomorrow. Just for a brief time. It's really absolutely spectacular where we are in the sports calendar. I'm getting a chance to meet Jimmy Johnson on Sunday in San Diego. Uh, Their Fox guys are putting the show out there, and we're going to go meet Jimmy. We're going to have a conversation. My Canes are now 9-0. Great weekend in college football, too. Starting to look and get the teams in college football, which teams could be the top 12 teams. We'll talk more about that later, obviously. NFL, then, of course, the Eagles in that game yesterday. I have never seen a more miserable 6-2 and football team in my life than the Philadelphia Eagles. I mean, how come I come away from a game like that against the Jaguars where really a lot of the people that were in that game played very well, and yet there you were with a five-point win with the Jags with a chance to win on the final possession. How is that possible? How is that possible? Okay? How is that possible? Anybody in here defending that coach is a freaking moron you are a moron that team wins in spite of the coach the roster carries the coach that roster carries the coach can you imagine if you had a more qualified coach can you imagine if you had a more qualified coach can he's reckless He's not aggressive. He's reckless. Dude, I'll tell you, the two coaches from a couple years ago that were hired, Dan Campbell and Nick Sirianni, who would you rather be coached by? Nick Sirianni, any fool that supports that guy is a fucking clueless moron. The best coach in that game was on the other side of the football field. Did you not see it? Four different old linemen. I can't even tell you who their wide receivers are. Their defense is the worst. Worst in pass defense. Okay? The worst. Nobody with any brains would support that guy as head coach. He's a fucking clueless moron. ESP, you leave nine points on the board and you give the Jags a chance to beat you. The Jags should never have been in that ball game. It's a miserable way to look at things. Six and two, you don't have all the components for a Super Bowl team. And by the way, you've beaten one team with a winning record. Don't sit here and try to tell me you found your groove. Against who? The Giants and the Jags combined are 4-14. Four 4-14. Four Calm yourselves down. We're going to get to the takeaways here in a minute. What an absolutely clueless portion of your fan base. Doug Peterson coached the shit out of buffoon and bozo Sirianni. 
absolutely coached his doors off with that bozo. What an app. That guy's, we'll get to it here, man. I mean, it's nauseating. Roster got the win. If Jacksonville had a decent quarterback, they would have won the game yesterday. He's the he's worse than Brandon Staley. Should have won by 12, not five. No question. This segment is sponsored by Tell Us Why You're Mad. Because that fucking coach is going to cost you a game that matters. Dude, you're lucky you played the Jags. They're a two and seven football team, and you're crowing about that win and that narrow win like you did over the Browns. What a bunch of shit, man. You don't know good football when you see it. You play a close game against a shitty team, congratulations to you. You're in the same position in the same conversation we were a year ago. 10 and 1. 10 and 1 versus shitty teams. What an absolute disgusting performance by a coach. He's an absolute asshole the way he goes about his business and uses the word and the terms aggressive. Nick Sirianni is reckless with your team. Reckless. Dude, they had no right being in that game. Get this. If it was a halfway decent team, they'd have beat you. Unbelievable. You're crowing about playing decent football. How many people think you played great football yesterday? Look at the opponent. You played down to him. Or you coach down to him. Which is it? Nick and Dan are different sides of the same coin. That being said, Sills is right. We won in spite of the coach. Dugout coach Nick. Bottom line. Absolutely. Tell me this. How many people believe you played well yesterday? If that's the case, you played well? How come the team had a last chance to beat you with no numbers? Either the coaching sucks or the players play down to their competition. You pick one. Xander, I missed the super chat. All super chats go to the top. Sills, who sucks more, Sirianni or Franklin? I think I'm watching the same two guys. They look like assholes on the sidelines. You know, you guys last year said it was Brian Johnson and Sean Desai. You tell me why you were in that game. Did you play down to your competition or did you coach down to your competition? You tell me. Pick one. Can't be, uh, it can't be both or can it? Get this. Do you know why we're talking like this? This is not about Sunday. My God Almighty, most of you folks are so ignorant that you can't see what we're doing here. This is not about the freaking Jaguar game. This is about a football team that's going to need all components to win a Super Bowl, and you don't have it. And it's never been on display this year like it wasn't a year ago. Hey, is the quarterback playing better? Yes. Is the defense? Yes. Is the coaching? Same shit as last year. No. No. Dallas, Washington, Rams, Ravens. Be lucky to go two and two. Dude, thank you for the super chat. I appreciate it. Please hit the like button. Important. Verse 15. Sirianni, get this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this right here. And this is all you need to know. Where is this guy? Where is that? Put that but put that up there where uh, DRC had it where he's 40 and not right here. Sirianni's now 40 and 19 as head coach. He's the second winningest percentage coach among active head coaches. 
You tell me then why people, if he had lost that game, would have said he would have been fired today. Doug showed you why he's a good coach. Nick isn't. Isn't that crazy? You got a 40 and 19 coach is only because of the roster, not him. He has nothing to do with this. As a matter of fact, that guy gets in the way. They win in spite of that coach. Holy shit. It's a great example of it. Look at the Chargers. Five and three with Jim Harbaugh. You get some good coaching, you're going to win some ball games. You got a great roster. This guy did everything in his power to lose that game yesterday. I have never seen anything like it. I have never seen anything like it. What a, what a disgrace of a coach. Seals, you make my blood boil sometimes, but watching you and Johnny Mack last night, I wanted to fight him. Nick Sirianni is a moron. By the way, Christopher, this is awesome of you. Thank you. If he didn't have the talent on the team, he'd be less than 500. He doesn't pay attention to situational football. And by the way, Christopher, the fucking analytics on that team, that owner's kid, is a moron also, because if those are the analytics that that coach is going off of, the whole entire operation needs to be self-evaluated. Okay? How, how about this guy here? Absolutely, he did not. Nobody agrees with him. There's not one person in the media or in football that agrees with John McMullen. No one. Oh, except the beat writers. Same dumbass said Barkley had a better game. This Henry against the Browns. I'm not sure what you're talking about. Derrick Henry's having an MVP season. Does Sirianni get any credit when he does kick field goals? Plus, we could talk about how good Hertz was. Dude. So he climbs away from the tush push when it got stuffed twice by the Jags on the goal line. Really? You don't have con you know, John was talking about confidence in his players. Well, obviously the coach didn't have confidence in the tush push last night because you know why? He throws a flare pass. Angelo Cataldi at 5.30, by the way. Gary Cobb at 4.30 and Xander at 3.30. Miss M. Reyes' chat. There you go. Cry, Seals, cry. Baldini is peak performance. He's a fucking moron. Thank you, Uncle. Appreciate you becoming a member. We appreciate that. Doug Peterson was the best coach. How many people think Doug was the best coach on the field? Let me show you something here. I usually do the numbers last. First downs, Jags had 14. Okay, wait a minute. All the people that support Nick Sirianni in here, which are morons. Absolute morons. Saquon Jersey giveaway tomorrow for members. Get your memberships in, please. That's Xander. You tell me what happened here. The Jags had 14 first downs. They were 3 of 10 on third down. They only ran 50 plays. They had a total of 215 total yards. They passed the ball for 155 yards. 18 attempts, they had 60 yards rushing. They had three turnovers. And they only held the ball for 20 minutes. How were they in the last possession game to beat you and they're on the 37? Explain that one to me. Come on, analyst. Explain that to me. Either Sirianni's an idiot or these, there's some serious point shaving going on. Should be investigated. He left nine on the board, and the Eagles were six and a half point 
favorites in that game, and they won by five. Hey, Xander, I missed I missed the super chat before Prince is here. I've never seen a head coach like this. It's it's a child on Madden. He's a disaster. He doesn't manage the game like a CEO coach. That's correct. That's a great take, Anthony. He manages that thing like a moron. Yesterday was just better players making better plays. He got punked by Jacksonville. At two stops. Nick's a bum. Hey, Prince has one too, I believe. Seals, I don't always agree with you, but Nick's actions make me want to punch him in the face. We dominated offensively and defensively, but the head coach was the weak link. Here, here's the Prince's point here. By the way, all Super Chats go to the top. Please do me a favor, hit that like button. Here's the Prince's point. This is exactly the point Prince is making here. So I just gave you, you had the ball 20 minutes, three turnovers in the game. You had a total of 255 or 215 Total yards and 14 first downs, and you were 3 of 10 on third down. Here's the Eagles. 9 of 17, almost 50% on first on third down. You had 21 first downs. You had 450 yards in total offense. You ran the ball for 237 yards. You had one turnover that was disputed, I think, and you held the ball for almost 40 minutes. How was it a one-possession game? Enlighten me. Enlighten me. Enlighten me. I heard that Barkley and Hurts played great. The defense played great. I, I was told that everything, the defense dominated. The offense dominated. Barkley and Hurts dominated. How are you in a five-point game where if the quarterback, instead of makes a bad play, makes a good play, you lose? How? Explain this. Again, folks, you know why this is critical conversation? Same shit as a year ago. It's going to bite you in the ass in the end like it did a year ago. I already see it. You're not playing very good football teams, and you're struggling against them. Either coaching not player not player performance lately. You're not struggling player performance lately. You're struggling coaching. You are struggling in coaching. You're struggling in coaching. Not even the coordinators. There's only one guy on that football team that's not living up to his job, and it's the head coach. You know why? Because that guy doesn't have a job. I missed the super chat here. How does the organization address this? Shouldn't the OC be raising concerns about decision-making or even a GM? I get he's the coach, but damn. How about this too, Josh? You see them put out that video? Remember what I told you last night, right, Xander? They'll put some halftime or post-game speech up on the Twitter page to make Sirianni look like this guy here is Bill Belichick. And by the way, N'Kobe Dean had two tackles. Don't tell me he played well. I went back and watched that thing a little this morning. He didn't play well. He had a really good play, obviously, to end the game. He didn't play well. Don't tell me he played well. Two tackles? He didn't play well. He was okay. Relax. That's not true. Go back and watch it. Well, for one, the rest gifted the Jack seven points. Okay. There you go. Always using excuses. We have a top five roster with a bottom five head coach. This could easily be a Super Bowl team with the right coaching in the room. The front office with the head coach will rob us. Here, at the end of the day, too, I'm not sure you're a Super Bowl team yet. I think you're trending that way. You haven't played anybody of any significance in the last month and a half. Nick Analytics Sirianni is a schmuck. That's right. I had people last night on the post-game show telling me you owe uh, Kobe Dean an apology. Do you know how many times he was out of position in that game Sunday? Seven. Des the Joe. This is very disheartening, Sills. Thought this team was trending up. Oh, it is. It is. Des, it is. But you got a doorstop. And your head coach, he's not qualified. 
Last year, Jacob posted something that I got a lot of heat for. You know what it was? I said that that coach is not qualified to be the head football coach of the Philadelphia Eagles. I still stand by that. Knicks, a winner. We didn't get it. F it. But the defense back out there, Nick isn't doing anything. Mr. Laurie and Howie isn't approving. Dude, you mean to tell me you think those in-game decisions, you think they're piping decision-making in their ear? Thank you, Marvin. I appreciate it. Do you actually believe that Jeffrey Laurie, when those decisions come up on the sidelines, is in his ear telling him what to do? Those in-game decisions are being decided by him on the sidelines. I'm Team John McMullen after last night. Congratulations to you, man. We, we welcome that. I don't give a shit if you agree with me or not. By the way, you're a buffoon. And not because you listen to John. Because if you back that coach, you're an asshole. How about this? Would you let that guy run your household? Spend all your money when maybe you shouldn't? And not be prudent? He's not aggressive. He's reckless. This was just 10 wins last season. Talent was good enough in spite of the head coach. Pop Warner GM management. He's trash. I missed the super chat, Xander. Keep cooking, Sills. You had Johnny Max um, squeakier than basketball court. Accountability um, in this city. We got players fighting reporters. How, how about this? I'll get to that, too. I thought he was going to get up and leave. Because he got so he got so upset last night, I thought he was going to walk off the set. I disagree. Hey, I shouldn't have took personal shots at him, but I don't back off of anything I'm saying. I can't wait to get Angelo at five thirty. Uh, big sales. I only said that because your yelling match last night was entertaining. With you, hey, thank you too. Hey, always sunny. Thank you for the super chat. Hit those super chats. We appreciate it. We get to Bob and see what Bob says. Bob's real good at this. Sales analytics should have never come into play yesterday. We outclassed Jacksonville out of the tunnel. No shit, man. That thing was that thing should never have been close. Except for the head coach, Nick's lack of situational awareness let Jacksonville off the mat. That must be fixed. Absolutely, that's the point. Bob, Bob has got such great takes. Don't you really? If you say, how did you oh, wait a minute? So all, all the Nick Sirianni lovers, let me get one in here. Give me a Nick Sirianni lover. Because I want to ask you a personal question. Here's DRC. DRC. If you're on the side of Nick, okay? How did Jacksonville have a shot to win that game last night? How, how did they have a shot to win that game? How'd they have a shot? Can I get a shout out for my boy, Sydney? <laughs> that was a great hit in special teams. That was a great hit. That was a great hit. I, I've mentioned it in my uh, post game. Seals, we need Marcus Hayes on the panel this week. No particular reason at all. No, probably not. Great content in Philly this week. Hey, how about this? So how do you struggle against the Browns and you struggle against the Jags? Why is that? And you lose to the Falcons. How is that? By the way, Jalen Hurts did something great yesterday. You know, what was it? What was it? And not the obvious, the turnovers. What was the one thing that was awesome that Hurts did yesterday? I'm going to get to my takeaways here in a minute. What was the one thing that Hurts did yesterday? But then again, it was the shitty Jags. No, it wasn't run. The offense didn't fall off the map when A.J. Brown left. 
Nick is aggressive for the sake of being aggressive. No thought of the process behind it. Excellent take, Vincent. Do me a favor, uh, Xander. Please put that up there. We got another one um, behind Vincent's here. Nick needs to go into the broom closet immediately. Dez is Hebrew. I'd trade Nick for a bag of trail mix right now. Absolutely. Get this. It's one thing to be in a football game against a decent team, not a shitty team. Yeah, great. You play close, close games with the Giants, the Browns, and the Jaguars. No, you're, you're, you're trending to being a Super Bowl team. Take the check down, too. Hey, we missed two Super Chats, Xander. By the way, we appreciate all these Super Chats going to the top, as I said. We read them all. Of course, they're not in his ear. But Nick does this all the time. Look at Nick's record. No way they're firing him. We're going to the Super Bowl. So you think struggling against the struggling against the Browns and the Jaguars, you're a Super Bowl team. How ignorant is that take? You've played one good team this year, and the other ones, you lost to them. You've had one good, meaningful win this year, and you struggled versus the Browns and the Jacks. How in the world do you think you're in a position to say you're a Super Bowl team? Okay? Dude, if you take the attempts and you put the – hey, by the way, there were other mistakes that were made in that game. You know, I thought about it. Xander said something about Barkley making a mistake last night. I hadn't thought about it until I went back and watched it. Him not getting out of bounds, or excuse me, him not picking that first down up. Can you imagine if they had picked the first down up and picked a couple more yards up? Maybe that field goal Jake Elliott has is maybe it's closer. Instead of banging off the upright, maybe that is a little closer for him. And he's got more of an um, opportunity to, at a higher percentage to make a field goal. Dak probably is going on IR. Check their schedule. They could be the first pick. You think Travis Hunter could be fit in Dallas? I told you the Cowboys would win five games. Xander, I missed, the, I, I missed the super chat here after 304, please. Do me a favor. If you can, please, guys, hit the like button here. We got an opportunity here if you hit the like button here. Um, hey, Sills, I would trade for a power back and pass rusher. What do you think? I don't want to wear down Barkley. 27 carries in the game. I think some of the load being taken off of Barkley is at the behest of Hurts. Okay? I do. Sills, your excuses for Barkley was probably had the ATL drop in mind. So, yeah, and I think, I think that all played into it. I, I I do I I do and I'm I'm not, dude. He's played so well. There's been there's been gaps, okay. There's been gaps where he's had moments. You know what I'm saying? He's had moments. Hit the like button, guys, please. All super chats go to the top. Do you understand what we're doing here? Let me get to my takeaways. Game balls will come up here in a minute. We'll do that here in a second. Please hit the like button. Um, Jaguars were the last opportunity to beat the Eagles at Lincoln Financial is absolutely mind-numbing. That the head coach kept that team in that game. The owner's son controls what they do situationally. That requires analytics. If you think about it, if he meets with the, every Tuesday, He's doing what he's told. No, I think they build that game plan. Frank Reich said it off the analytics from Julian. Absolutely. What do you think of Travis Hunter as a prospect? He's the best player in last year's draft. He's the best player in this year's draft. That's what I think of Travis Hunter. He's one of the best secondary players I've seen probably in 25 years. Eagles survive. Um. That game was out of hand. 
and then Nick systematically let him back in it. Parkley and Hurts, I'm going to make this point to you here, rapidly getting closer and closer to looking a little like Lamar and Henry. I mean, it's starting to look like that a little. Those two guys are starting, and those two tandems are starting to look alike. The difference in Baltimore is they actually have good coaching. I mean, the defense is clearly getting better. By the way, your perimeter edge rushers stink outside of Josh Sweat. They absolutely stink. Is, really, do you buy that Huff's hands hurt? No. Casey struggled against Atlanta and Cincinnati. Baltimore let Dallas come back and lost to Cleveland. Point is, quit knocking the Eagle wins. This is the NFL. Yeah, well, Kansas City beat fucking Baltimore. Who'd you beat? Kansas City beat Baltimore. And Atlanta beat you. Lions only team in the NFC may be beating us. That's so obnoxiously ignorant. That's the difference between Nick and Dan Campbell. Besides, Nick's already been to a Super Bowl. Holy cow. So's Lovey Smith. So's Lovey Smith been to a Super Bowl. So's Ken Wisenhunt. What's your point? Bat coaches go to Super Bowls too, dude. Hey, get this. I see people last night, they were like, hey, Seals, Hurts was elite against the Jags. I have yet to see Jalen Hurts elite in a, an elite game this year. Is that fair? Is that fair? I have yet to see, I've seen Mahomes before elite in elite football games. I've seen Lamar in Elite football games. Hertz hasn't played in an elite game yet. And you want to dub him that. Will our soft schedule ultimately be our undoing? No, your coaching will be your undoing. Players are picking it up. Players are picking it up. Um, you passed up nine points in this game. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. How reckless that coach is with your team. Our coaches run the show. Nick listens to the sun. Other coaches. Dude, I thought your coordinators were fine. Here, get this. One more time, I'm going to ask you. How you gave that team a chance to win the game? Trevor Lawrence, 169 yards passing. Two picks. NTN, three carries, 24 yards. Some dude named Evan Ingram, five catches, 45. Parker Washington, who? Four catches, 31. And Austin Trammell had two catches for 40. How in the world are you in a room with Hurts 18 to 21, 24 for 230 and two touchdowns? Barkley, 27 carries, 159 and a TD and a TD catch. Hurts, three, ca three carries, 67 yards and a TD. Devontae Smith, four catches, 87 yards, and Barkley, three catches for 40 yards and a touchdown, as I said. How in the world did Jacksonville stay in this game? You won't admit it. And you say John acts like he's never wrong. You know, I, okay, Anthony. Let's see if Anthony answers the question here.
I'll take whatever. By the way, whatever Anthony answers, I want you to listen. Ready? The Jags had 14 first downs. They were 30% on third down, 3 of 10. They had 215 yards of total offense, ran the ball for 60 yards, had the ball for 20 minutes. The quarterback had 155 in passing yards. Etienne had 24 yards rushing. And guys named Evan Ingram, five catches, 45. Parker Washington, 430 for four catches for 31. And Austin Trammell, two catches for 40. How did you give the Jags the last opportunity to beat you? Anthony, what, what is it? And, and Hurts and Barkley and Devontae all played great. How'd you give one of the shittiest teams in the league a chance to beat you? We got to beat before you believe. Who do we got to beat before you believe we're going to the Super Bowl? Doesn't work like that. Would you play Hunter at wide receiver or corner? I'm not playing him at both. Xander, I missed the Super Chat. Look at this. Hold on. That's a problem. That's not what I was saying. You're wrong about. What are, what are you saying I'm wrong about? Xander, I missed the suit. There we go. Combined record for teams we beat, 18 and 36. I got to keep that stat. <laughs> 18 and 36 are the teams you beat so far this year. By the way, those edge rushers gave all that offense wanted yesterday. Between Allen and Walker, Hurts was sacked like three times in that game, holding on to the ball too long. Just imagine when you play somebody decent. It's not going to look like that. Hurts has been playing elite against two. Who's he played elite against? Let's see. What'd you say? So the Browns, who are three and seven, or three and eight. The Giants, who are two and seven. And the Jags, who are two and seven. Okay. He's been able to put it together versus some... Below average teams. Jenny might be drinking that magical <laughs> from out in the Sirianni. No way in hell anyone with two brain cells would defend them, buddy. I got it, man. Hey, so wait a minute. That's a good point here. Let me take a look at that. I gotta, I gotta look at that. So wait a minute here. The last four weeks. Three and six, <laughs> four and five, 11, seven, two and seven, 18, nine, and then two and seven. Okay. 26. Last three, last four weeks since the bye, you've played teams and beat teams with a combined record of 11 and 26. And you're talking to me about shit being elite. When your coach can't even get out of his own freaking way. Holy cow. Hurts holding the ball, taking sacks is not elite. Three sa Hey, you want to know what elite was in that game? Those edge rushers that Jacksonville has. That, that's elite. Seals, in a league built for parity, you can't give a bad team life. Coaches watching film on Philly now know that if they stick around long enough, Nick will open up the door for him. <laughs> Dude, Bob, you have great takes always, man. Hey, by the way, did anybody happen to see the comments that um, Lane Johnson had after the game? Did anybody see the comments Lane had? What he thought about the game? How come Lane talks like me <clears throat> about the game? Lane was very disappointed about the game. Xander, I missed the super chat. Apologize. 
Lane didn't think they played well. Lane Johnson was actually pissed. And yet you're talking to me about eliteness. When one of the elite players didn't say that. What about the team that the Lions beat? I'm talking about the Philadelphia Eagles right now. Okay? Worry about yourselves. Worry about yourselves. Start comparing yourself to others, you lose sight of what you're doing, which is standard. Are you an Eagles fan? No. I'm a fan of the fans that root for that team. How could I be an Eagle fan? I just started covering them four years ago. But do you want me to sit here and do what most people do in the media? Lie to you? I can't do that, son. Head coach just say, can't stay out of the way. Get this. Xander, I brought this up on the post-game show. I had one of my takeaways that that I said that I had was when, when it came to, like, Bold predictions. Would Nick Sirianni stay out of the way? My bold prediction was no. And it's coming to fruition. That's why you're all mad at me. He only kills momentum. Jay said, you're dead on. Thank you for the super chat. I'm right again. I'm a Hurts fan. He's not elite. He's getting better. Absolutely true, Q. He's totally getting better. Hertz is not elite, but he's playing better. Absolutely, Anthony. Very true. A lot better. By the way, I'm right again. I'm right again. Nick couldn't stay out of the way. He's got to have a job. The coordinators are doing their job. Kellen's actually making the kid better. Vic's doing a spectacular job on the other side of the ball. The only guy that's not is the same guy who fucked it up last year, Nick Sirianni. I said, can Nick Sirianni stay out of the way and out of Kellen's way? He can't. And he'll be on your undoing. Same dude. Can I say this to you? Nick Sirianni, wait a minute. Let's do this. I think the coordinators have fixed the problems of a year ago. But I think the one thing the coordinators can't fix is the one problem that you had last year. That's the head coach. The only problem you haven't fixed is him. Nick Sirianni is a cancer on that coaching staff. Hertz is playing all right. He's playing, he's playing better than all right. He damn near held the ball uh, for a shot clock violation and took two sacks. Besides that, he's been playing fair. I don't think fair. I think he's been playing a lot better. Sills not elite, but he's getting better, my man. He can't stay out of the way. Why do you think he's still here? Because that's the type of style of coach they want. A yes man. He's a yes man. He's a lap dog. He's a guy that is a puppet. He's a puppet. Can somebody post what um, Lane's exact quote was? Seals Lane's message is with Oklahoma charm. Yours is with Connecticut piss and vinegar. Same message, different delivery. Both are correct. Paychecks have different signatures. My stuff, my stuff is Connecticut, New York, New Jersey kind of stuff. Okay? That kind of stuff. New England. Yeah. More of an asshole. Yeah. If they converted all those attempts, 
Are we even talking about this? No, we have a boring. You know what we have, Andreas? A boring Monday show about a win that you crush the Jags and no one cares. Correct. No. If they convert on all their things and blow the Jags out, this would be an awful show today. Beating the Jags, you guys would be like, and? If we, if we shouldn't compare ourselves to others, why does the opponent's records matter? Because we're talking about, at the end of the day, home field advantage doesn't really indicate how you're playing going into the playoffs. You can get out to a great record and have a great record, get into playoffs like the Ravens did a year ago and lose. Because why? The Chiefs were playing better. They were 14 and three. If I'm not mistaken, Kansas City had the same wins you did. But Kansas City was looking like a 14 win team. And when Baltimore got to the AFC Championship, they looked like they were a 10 win team and not playing. At all cylinders, Kansas City was. That's why. Hurts not elite compared to who? Josh Allen? Never been. That that right there is not an indictment because Allen's never been to a Super Bowl. Rex Grossman's been to a Super Bowl, and so is Jimmy Garoppolo. I mean, that's such a shitty and stupid metric that you use. My God almighty. Mahomes has multiple championships, and Josh Allen is 7-2 and two with a bunch of players who wouldn't make the roster under Hurts. Just not a guy on that Bills team that would make the offensive roster. Not one guy. You're dead right, Bobby. Josh Allen doesn't have one guy that plays offensively that would play in, a, in Philly. There's not one guy. Running back, tight end, O-line, receivers, nobody except the quarterback. Do you think Nick is being told to do those questionable calls by the analytics team? I do. I don't know how analytics says to go and chase two points. I'll tell you in a minute here. By the way, let me get that last super chat here. Okay? Daniel, I'm high on what? Um, Xander, I missed this. Here we go. Seven and one Falcons. Lose should be counted as a win. <laughs> I'm high on what? Get this. So you're telling me James Cook would start over Barkley and Cooper Coleman would start? Oh, who's fucking Cooper Coleman? Would start over who? Devontae? Those are their one and one guys, not their third guys. Holy cow. Look at this guy trying to move the needle here. Like, Cooper Coleman is their number two dude. And Cook is their number one guy. You mean, this guy thinks, Daniel thinks, that James Cook would start over uh, Saquon Barkley. Or that Keon Coleman would start over Devontae Smith. How dumb are you? Holy shit. Oh, Sills, but Keon Coleman would start at the number three. He's a number one up there. Well, yeah, you know, their number one guy would be our number three guy. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> get this. Look at this guy. Here, here, get this. Mike Mike actually thinks Amari would wide receiver three on our team. Yeah, and he's wide receiver two up there. So you're telling me you think he would be um, a guy up there down in Philly? He'd be he'd be starting over Devontae. There's not one player in the Bills' offensive huddle from lineman on down to receivers to back. That would start in Philly. They'd be backups. Get this. So who's he starting over? Hey, Bitsy, who's he starting over? 
Who, who are those two guys starting over? Johan Dotson? Cook? Cook would start over Barkley? Once again, Busy, get the shit out of your ears. They don't have one player that could start in the Philly offense. Didn't say make the team. Start. Start. Except Josh Allen. The only guy that would start in that offense would be Allen over Hurts. I can't even say that. Holy cow. The Nick Sirianni lovers in here can't handle it. That your coach is a buffoon. Josh Allen would start people damn stop. Yeah, does. They don't want to admit it. They, 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 thanks for the super chat. <laughs> Not one player would start in Buffalo. Okay. Well, why why don't we circle this back here and get back on topic here or you don't want to let's get to a topic here wait i'll get to my game balls here in a minute please hit the like button is nick sirianni gonna cost the eagles a super bowl yes or no xander i'd like to do a poll on that Is Nick Sirianni going to cost the Eagles a Super Bowl? I bet Lurie questioned Kellen by running the ball. Can a passer throwing 20.7? Five times a game win a Super Bowl. Detroit and Minnesota will eat us up with their pass rush, forcing Hurts to throw more than 30 times. I brought that up on the um, uh, postgame show, and I don't believe he can. Poll created. Fantastic. We got a poll running right now. I want you to vote, and we'll keep a running tab on it. Is Nick Sirianni going to cost you an opportunity of, at a Super Bowl championship? Still, I've never seen a head coach that wanted us to lose more than Sirianni. It's frustrating seeing this because when playoff time comes, it'll be infuriating like it was a year ago. Poll is in the chat. You can vote right here. I think he is. Here comes the uh, president of the Nick Sirianni fan club. I misunderstood my apologies. Allen is the only player I'd want from the Bills. Laughing my ass off. And Sirianni already cost us the Super Bowl. Daniel, I apologize. He's already. Hey, by the way, Jonathan Gannon is coaching his ass off out there in Arizona. They're leading the West. Over San Francisco and the Rams in Seattle. Jonathan Gannon. Yours truly and others may have been wrong about that guy. He already cost us. He already cost him one. And he'll not get back. Killing a great roster. KC wins because of their coaching. Correct. It's not their roster. Hey, get this. Think about that for a minute. That's such a great super chat. By the way, all super chats go to the top. Hey. That's that's the ultimate super chat. Kansas City doesn't have the best roster. Far from it. 
the Caucasian cornerback. Hoop! Looks like a five-year vet. I love the fans at the link doing that Coop chant. I thought that was dope. I did. I like that. I did. Think about this. The Chiefs don't have the best roster in the NFL. They got the best quarterback and the best coaching staff. Best GM. And he's had it everywhere he's been. Jim Johnson. Joe Banner. Him. He knows how to build a franchise. Kudos to Andy. Give me the best coordinator on defense. Give me the best coordinator on offense, which is me. Find me a competent or above competent like you got with Mahomes and McNabb. I'll take you places. It's not about wideouts. By the way, once again, how many weeks is AJ going to be out? Three to five, they say. Get more back on the MRI later on today. Can I tell you who else is going to cost you a Super Bowl? Not just Sirianni. It's the Eagle Analytics Department. John was trying to argue with me about analytics last night, and I called it applied analytics. I'm not putting my game plan together based off of analytics. I'm going to apply analytics when I feel needed. The guy on the other side outcoached him. Do you think Howie makes a move today? Maybe. Xander, I missed the super chat. I live in Buffalo. All I ever hear is if we just had one of those guys in Philly. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Amari's a good player. You got you got good coaching up there. McDermott is turning it back around again. Okay? How about this? Frank Reich came on this program a year ago and told you how the game plan was built. I think many of you just blew that off. Many of you blew that off. Nick Sirianni builds his game plan off the information that they get from the analytics. And you know why he's going for that? They're telling him, and some of you are going like this, maybe he's just listening to the front office. He's listening to the analytics of the front office. In theory, he's doing what he's basically told to go for it. This is not just Nick. This is those guys, too. I heard John say something this morning when I when I tuned in a little bit. Well, this has been aggressive since Doug. I, I wish Xander would have asked him one thing. So Doug used analytics from the front office and he was aggressive. Look at the difference between Nick Sirianni's aggressive decision-making in game and look at Doug's. Philly, Philly, go for it. And I heard Xander say something. And see, John can land on this, and everyone else can land on this. Well, Monday morning quarterback stuff. How about Sunday afternoon coaching? Do you know why Bill Belichick and Tom Brady and Patrick Mahomes wins so many football games? Do you know why? They're not reckless in their play calling. They go with high percentage plays all the time. Check downs. Not very many deep passes. They don't pass points up. They play the percentages. I tried telling John that last night. Well, that's not who Philly is. Okay. That's who New England and KC is. They play the percentages. John says that's not how they play it. And that means confidence. That doesn't mean that to me. You got to be smart. When you're playing in a football game, you play the percentages. You don't play aggressiveness. At that one particular moment there is the percentage to play this play. Now, if that play is the number one play 
and gives you the best chance, you play that play. I play percentages. Brady was never a deep thrower. Mahomes is not a deep thrower. How come those guys have won the last 13 Super Bowls? Or in the last 25 years, they've won 13 of them. You don't really think there's any coincidence to that? I know this is going to rub people the wrong way, but we began to have a conversation that A.J. Brown is very injury prone. prone. That hurts us. Eh, I'm not going there. I'm not, I'm not going there yet. Dan, stop it. We know this about our owner and GM. Nothing is going to change. If you fire the head coach, Nick only follows orders. And this is why you're one and three in Super Bowls under him. This is totally why you're one and three. Crosby needs to get his white ass over to Philly. <laughs> Sills, what does it say about this team if we're going to get to the Super Bowl? Get the Super Bowl. Nick would be the weakest link on the field. This goes back to the organization not valuing and not valuing coaching staff development. Absolutely. Hey, let me ask you something here. Think about something. I'm going to show you something. Hey, um, 304, you in here? And leave this up here with Bob Brown saying about evaluating coaching staff guys and elevating them and developing them. Hey, 304, you in here? I want to show you something here about an organizational F-up in Dallas. And I want to show you how it applies to the Eagles here a little bit. Okay, so let me ask you this. You got a football coach right now in Dallas, and you got a quarterback who's saying we effing suck on the sidelines, right? And the whole organization right now is in turmoil. Well, explain this to me. So you let Dan Quinn out the building, and you don't hire him as a Dallas Cowboys head coach, and he's got a 7-2 and two team now. You got an offensive coordinator in Washington who right now – or excuse me, in Philadelphia, who's now with a 6-2 and two football team. You let both those guys walk out your building? You fired both. You fired one of them. You fired one of them. Doug is aggressive with precision. Yep. Nick is aggressive with reckless abandon, like a sledgehammer. That's why Doug's better. Think about that in Dallas. Jerry doesn't look at the coaching staff and value it. You had Dan Quinn. He's in first place in the East. Right now, you're a wild card. You're seven and two. And you got a coordinator in Philly who's in the top 10 offensively. And Hurts is starting to play better. Well, what do you got going on in Dallas right now? You got a lame duck head coach. Mike Zimmer looks like he's completely outmatched. How come Jerry didn't hire one of those guys to be the head football coach of his team? Did he not see the value? Because Kellen's going to get an opportunity if Jalen keeps trending this way. Could be New Orleans now that that coach has been fired. Look at the organizational mess up because that organization believes they know what's best. For the team, same in Philly. They don't value their coaches. <laughs> Think about that. Kellen's the OC of a 6-2 and two team in Philly, and Dan Quinn is the head coach of a 7-2 and two Washington Commanders team. And this is the best record that Washington has had since 1997. You didn't see the value? Look, how am I sitting here pointing that out to you? You're telling me that guy at Valley Ranch can't see that? That's why coaching in the NFL matters. It matters. Game balls are coming up here in a second. Please hit the like button. Super Chats go to the top. 
Here, Yale says that the Eagles value um, more in Vic and Sirianni, et cetera. Then why does the head coach come in and sabotage the football game plan with those reckless decisions if they value their decision and they allow the head coach to come in and theoretically put their defense in poor position and sabotage scoring opportunities? Can you imagine if you're Kellen Moore? Let me ask you this. If you're Kellen Moore and you drive your football team into a position to get points on the board and score, and you have a head coach that comes in and says, wait a minute, we're going for it on fourth down. And you put that guy in position to do exactly what you were hired to do. And your head coach takes you out of that position. What's your take on that? Isn't that sabotaging? I was brought in here to put that football offensive team in a position to win. And by the way, get this. Once again, here we go again. 10 and 1. Oh my God. It is the dumbest way of looking at a football team. 6 and 2. It's so dumb. Not every record is equal. Not every record is equal. <laughs> hey, look at this. Commanders are playing a fourth place schedule. And you've beaten one team with a winning record. Stop it. Look at Senor trying to downplay the commander record when you haven't played fucking anybody. And the teams that had a winning record beat you. Every team that had a winning, has a winning record has beaten you. That may change tonight with the Bucks. Not having Chris Godwin and Mike Evans. Sills is yelling, and we haven't played anyone, but we picked five every team to beat us. And last, I'm not sure what the hell that means. That's, dude, what are you talking about? What are you talking about here? Seals, what qualifies a team to get into the playoffs and even have a shot at the Super Bowl? Momentum, health, key positions, great coaching. That's how you're going to win a Super Bowl. Oh, I know. Seals going off about Barkley dropping a pass in Atlanta. Oh, I know. Or missing a block. Or not getting out of bounds to make the field goal easier, to have a two-score opportunity. Instead, you turn the ball over midfield. You give the ball to the Jags, and you give them a chance to beat you at 2-17. and 17. You're right. That probably won't come back to haunt you against good teams in the playoffs. You're right. Look at this guy. Looking at how th – that is so dumb. Barkley, that, this is a game of inches. Everything matters. Barkley not – Getting the first down? How about if they get the first down and at the end of the day, they get a couple more yards, 10 or 12 more yards. They kick instead of a 57-yard field goal, they kick a 47-yard field goal. And they give Jake Elliott a better opportunity to make it a two-score game and no chance for the Jags with no timeouts to win. That's situational play calling, my friends. That's situational thinking. I'm not going to kill Saquon. But he has those mental errors in every game he plays, missing a, a block on a sack, dropping a ball, not getting the first down. It's becoming quite habit. I'd say, I know you beat the Packers. You beat one team with a winning record. I got it. <laughs> Look at this guy. Hey, Mr. Perez. What's the content that you think that you would add to this mix? That you're six and two versus shitty teams, and that your football head coach cost you an opportunity to blow a team out, to give your guys an opportunity to take your starters out, maybe rest some of your players so that you can get into the Cowboy game and start the um, the initial. This you're a honk. You're ESP in our 
in our chat. That's what you are, Mr. Perez. You're ESP. Why do you act like me? They can't learn from it. Because the coach hasn't learned from it. The players have. The players have learned. The players are getting better. I don't have one issue with the players. How could I? They had a great game. And yet you gave the Jags with no offense a chance to beat you. They go for it, plays like his temperament, his ego will cost the Eagles. And how about this? Up the, the, the Jaguars, the Jaguars, with players out all over the place. Stop the touch push. John McMullen last night was telling me, don't you think they have confidence in the touch push? I go, yeah. Well, then why are you throwing screens? Nick Sirianni contradicts himself every single time he can. You have confidence in the tush push. Well, not that moment you didn't. That's the first sign that that play broke. And panic. That was panic coaching. Throw a flare pass on fourth and one. Instead of just doing it again. The Jags broke the tush push two plays in a row. And I disagree. I didn't think he got in. Guess we will know more in three weeks versus the Ravens. I think oh, Ravens and Commanders. And a short work week. Seals, we have a formula to win, yet someone is in the kitchen adding molasses to it when they don't need to. Correct. Remember what I said, Abe, at the beginning of the year. Will Sirianni stay out of the way? No. No. I'm right. Sad, but I'm right. I thought he'd get out of the way. She don't want no puppy. She wants a big dog. I thought he would stay out of the way. I did. You know, the here, and I, I can only give you examples, having been around Hall of Fame coaches. By the way, I'm looking forward to seeing Coach Johnson this weekend. I never heard a pipe out of him or anything in a game. He barely said anything. He did timeouts. But he let the offensive coordinator, North Turner, and Dave wants that call all the plays situationally. Jimmy just listened, and he evaluated them on Monday. He never got in the way. He won three Super Bowls. 75%. Yes, that Sirianni will cost the Eagles a Super Bowl. Coach never got in a way like that. Never. He'll never stay out of the way. He knows he contributes nothing. And in his eyes, this is the only way to show he matters. It's going to kill us. Dude, this guy's got Chip Kelly qualities. He, he's got Chip Kelly qualities to him. At least Chip's a play caller. Sills, we have elite talent with a clown in charge. It's like putting... Cowboy on secretariat, Ron took out who? <laughs> when to hold him, when to hold, when to hold back, and when to hit him. That's right. As a matter of fact, Bob, years ago I had a chance to talk to Ron Turcotte, who rode secretariat. You know, in that Belmont, he said he never touched him. He just said, let's go. And that was the end of it. I think he said the only time he did it 
was the only time that he grabbed the lead. That was in Belmont, where he would win by 30-plus lengths, coming down the stretch. Only one time was out of the gate. It's the only time. Nick's like a gambler. Won't take the money offered. Yeah, it's like the guy who was up. By the end of the night, he's down 500 grand. His ego won't let him stay out of the way. He feels it apt and it shows. His tush push is his, is his validation. And that's why when it got stopped, boy, you see him on the sidelines? <laughs> I was like, it was almost like he was embarrassed. Why are you embarrassed? It's a football play. Things happen. Anybody who validates that guy and supports that guy, you're 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 cruising for another L in the Super Bowl or a playoff game that matters. Would you really ever let that guy coach your football team in a in a decisive game? Would you really want him coaching your football team in a decisive game to go to the Super Bowl or to win an NFC championship game? I gotta say this, man. Steichen took it on the chin, and they're now four and five in Indianapolis, but they're hanging around. That was pretty good coaching staff. I mean, the other guy, Jonathan Gannon, is leading the West. Those guys were underrated. Nick's overrated. Think of that. Your coordinators were underrated. They were underrated. You know why? Because the Philadelphia media, and I'm not going to name any names, to this day, still validates Nick Sirianni on that Super Bowl when everyone knows now it was those two coordinators. And now they don't want to be wrong that it was Nick pulling all the punches and making all the decisions. It's not true. They brought two coordinators in that are completely highly competent. And now what's the issue? Your situational decision making. Get this it's not even. Here's the problem that you have. It's not even your situational play calling anymore. It's your situational decision making. How many people think the Eagles have a situational decision making issue on the team right now at six and two? How many people think they have, again, situational play calling, the fourth and one? Okay. Here, here's my game balls. Xander's going to join us in a couple minutes. Gary Cobb at 4.30 and Angelo Cataldi at 5.30. I can't wait. Angelo is not a fan of Nick Sirianni. Here are my game balls, and I do them in order. Number one, Saquon Barkley, man. Absolutely sensational. Absolutely sensational. I mean, the only guy playing better at that position is Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry has a thousand yards rushing in only nine ball games. Now Barkley's over a thousand with uh, scrimmage yards, but Henry has a thousand yards rushing in nine ball games. Do you understand he's on pace to break? Eric Dickerson's 2105. That's how good that guy is. And Saquon's right there, how good he is. Seals, we won't make it to the Super Bowl with him. I know you won't. We have some very capable coaches on the schedule. We barely beat these terrible teams like the Jags. I'm with you, Philly. Dude, you're struggling against the Browns? And get this. Do you know why those two teams were in it? Because the Browns and the Jags had better head coaches.
Saquon Barkley gets my game ball, number one. Number two, Jalen Hurts. Um, 18 of 24, 230, two touchdowns, 67 yards, 13 carries, one TD. I mean, starting to look a little bit like 2022. Let me take one gander here. Um, I want to I want to take a look at this here, just for craps and giggles here, about Jalen Hurts and where he's on right now. And where he's on pace for right now. Let's take a look at this, and if he's trending up. So Jalen Hurts right now. How many people look at this and think this is bet? This is good. So currently right now, Jalen Hurts is on pace for 3,770 passing yards, 21 touchdowns, and nine picks. What does that remind you of? And 70% completion percentage. What does that remind you of? 2022. That's more what he is. That's more what that player is. Okay? That's more what that player is. It's exactly those numbers. Um, now let's go here. This is going to be a telling stat here a little bit, because right now, currently, when you're talking about durability and him being able right now, he's got 86 attempts in eight games. So he's averaging a little bit over right now, roughly around 11 carries a game. And you've got and you've got nine ball games left. So you're looking at right now. Jalen Hurts having 190 carries. Is that sustainable? Jalen Hurts will have 190 carries this year. Is that sustainable? I, I, I can't think of a quarterback that's your elite quarterbacks in the league that's going to carry the ball almost 200 carries. Not even Lamar. Right now he's got 88 carries. He's averaging about 11, so he's going to be around 195 in carries. Is that sustainable? By the way, someone goes, take the tush push away? Why would I take the carries away in the tush push? It's arguably the most contact, the most violent part of his carries. You're constantly inside there. That's how Patrick Mahomes got hurt. He doesn't do the quarterback sneak any longer. Now, this is a good take, Raj. Seals, you were shitting on him earlier this year, just like I was, and it was justified. You have to say Jalen is looking. I did. When, when did I shit on Jalen right now? I said Jalen played great in the game. I didn't. Where am I shitting on him? Where did you hear me shit on Jalen Hurts today? I asked you, do you think 200 carries is sustainable for a running back, let alone a quarterback? Where am I shitting on him? Okay. Josh Allen is on pace, right? I mean, Josh, Josh Allen is on pace for 380 passing, 3,800 passing yards and 88 carries. That's far different than 90, 200 carries. And Nicobe Dean played awful in that game, except for the INT. Not true. He didn't have a good game. Go back and watch it. Not true. Um, Coach Allen played well. Game ball number two. Number three, Zach Bond was outstanding again. First three um, 
plays of the game, this guy was everywhere. Dude, this guy right here is trying to tell me a guy with two tackles played great in a game. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Dude, really? Jordan Davis had as many tackles, as, and he's a DT. And, oh, he's a nose. Wow. Again, Josh Sweat is kicking ass. Good for you, Josh. Vontae Smith, outstanding. And I gave my final game ball to Vic Fangio. So Barkley won, Hurts two, Zach Bond three, Sweat four, Jalen Carter five, Devontae Smith six, and Vic Fangio seven would be my game balls. But Carter did a nice job in the middle in there. I held him to 60 yards rushing. What's it like? The Jaguar offense was killing people. Your coach was killing you. Do you know what you're talking about? Nick's a good – here, let's look at Arthur here. Do you know what you're talking about? Nick is a good coach. Look at his record. So under your premise, you think that Nick Sirianni is a better coach than Andy Reid and um, Dick Vermeil, right? Or Bill Parcells because he has a higher win percentage. Is that what you're saying, Arthur? So if you have a higher win percentage, you're a better coach. Is that right? Is that what you're saying? Hey, somebody do me a favor. Tell me what Nick Sirianni's win percentage is. I'll show you how dumb these people are. Let me show you how dumb they are. Cherry pick. Hey, hold, hold on here. Hold on here. Here. So, career win percentage. Nick Sirianni's got about a, what, a 690 win percentage? Is that right? So according to that metric, what that guy said, look at his record. All right. Let's take a look at his record, Nick Sirianni. Wow. Look at Nick Sirianni. Look at all these coaches. Man, you got a great head football coach. Unbelievable. So he's a better head coach. Then Tony Dungy, Andy Reid, Mike Tomlin, according to that metric, Bill Cower, Joe Gibbs, Sean Payton, John Harbaugh, Bill Walsh, Tom Landry, Sean McVay. Really? Bill Parcells, Chuck Knoll, because he has a higher win percentage. Is that right? I got I to gotta show you this before I get to Xander Kraus. And I want to show you what kind of honks we have in, in, in your Philadelphia market, and I'm embarrassed for you. I was told by Xander and Joe Kraus that this was an absolutely difficult market and that the media was very difficult. Look at this. So, I, I you know, so look, look, look at this here. So the guy who is the main guy who covers the Philadelphia Eagles, this guy, Elliot Spitzer Shore Parks, has the quarterback with a B, well, maybe would have went B plus, coaching A minus, offense C, Y. They did everything right. Defense A, special teams A. Well, then how in the hell? Look at this, look at this moron. Then how the hell did you give the Jags a chance to beat you with five? 
with, with a minute left in the game and you're on the th they're on the 37 yard line of the Eagles. If this is all true, how did you give a two and seven football team a chance to beat you? If all this is true, quarterback B, coaching A, offense C, defense A, special, how did you give the shitty Jags a chance to beat you then? How was that game close? In this guy's eyes, this is a 37-17 game. How is this a five-point win? Sirianni and the refs? Okay. I'll hang on that. By the way, I did think that Barkley was down. You know... I'll say it one more time to you, man. John McMullen and I got into a, a back and forth. John thinks I'm full of shit, and I think he is too at times. And that's okay. That's totally cool. That's what makes Jacob great. We don't sound like WIP, where everyone sounds the same. I firmly believe the arrogance of Sirianni will cost the Eagles in the plows. His arrogance is a hazard. Hey, Harv, that's my contention today. That's my issue. One more, Xander, before I get to you here. Nick has better talent. That's why he has a good record. He's not better than those coaches. My issue is when you shit on Howie, um, he had, wait, wait. I shit on Howie because Howie Roseman and his analytics department and how they pick coaches and shit and all of that and getting in the way. Dude, somebody's telling Nick Sirianni because if he has no accountability for it on a Monday on how he coached that game, then the front office is cool with it. Xander told me that Doug Peterson had to go to the principal's office after a game in Green Bay that you won. Why shouldn't Nick have to go to the principal's office for that shit performance. Wow. Why are you defending this guy? Let me get to... Uh, it was really a great post-game show. Actually, those are my favorite kind of post-game shows when two people have something to say. Okay? that th Those are the best. You know, John and I had a great conversation after me. We're not budging off of what we feel. But you know, Big Sills, I'll throw a curveball and hit you in the nuts. Okay? I will. I'll, I'll admit it. I'll scream at the fans like Nick. And there's a the guy in the middle. Yeah, I tell you what, he's got a balancing act because in the morning he's got to sit down and listen to John. He's got to go, I kind of do see a side. Then he listens to Big Sills and he's like, shit. So he is, hey, he got a tough job in between the both of us here. Without further ado, the co host of Birds 365, Big Z. What's up, Big Sills? How you doing, brother? What a day for you, dog. Oh, yeah, man. Hey, it's been a hell of a couple days. Um, I absolutely love what I do right now. It's so much fun, honestly, <laughs> doing this stuff and talking about this football team. And I think you hit the nail on the head, man. Yesterday's postgame show was one of the best. Um, when, some, when two people got something to say, that's what makes great content. And I believe that the world needs more healthy discussions about things. You know, echo chambers are no good, Sills, no matter what side you're on. And I thought you guys both made good points. I maybe would have 